Hello, everyone. Good, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, based on where you are. My name is Livia Ignacio, and I'm Ban Sucro's head uh, for South America. And as most of you might know, Ban Sucro is the leading uh, global sustainability platform and standard for, for sugarcane, one of the world's most uh, important crops. Uh, our purpose is really to collectively accelerate the sustainable production and uses of, of sugarcane. And today is a very um, exciting day for us which we will present uh, more details about the project that we recently launched at Bon Sucro Global Week on uh, emergency uh, science-based uh, targets in the sugarcane um, sector. So before we start, I would just like to share um, some housekeeping um, information for, for the session. So this session is being uh, recorded. We are going to uh, publish the slides and the recording uh, afterwards. For any questions that you have, we kindly ask you to use the Q&A uh, button at the bottom or at the top of your, of your Zoom. And do not use the chat for questions because uh, with this, we can organize uh, better the, the answers. All the questions will be answered um, in the end. We're gonna try to answer uh, as many questions as, as possible, but we might need to follow up on some of them uh, after the webinar as well. And also in the end of the session, you will receive a quick uh, feedback survey link. Uh, and it's going to be really helpful if you, have, uh, if, if you can have some minutes uh, to complete this um, survey for us so that, so that we can always uh, improve our, our sessions. And here we go. So this is the agenda for, for today. We're gonna cover uh, some of the context that motivated this uh, project. We're going to go through the objectives of this project, including its uh, methodology and uh, deliverables that we're going to have. We're gonna touch base uh, on the roles and responsibilities and the team that is going to be involved uh, on this project. We're gonna see its timeline and uh, ways for companies to get involved with the development of this project. And we're gonna share a few resources that we already have available uh, in case you have interest to get to know more. And we're gonna wrap up with some time for, for Q and A. So um, it all starts uh, with the fact that sugarcane, as we know, is an agricultural crop and it has greenhouse gas um, emissions related to, to its production, processing, and use, as you can see here uh, in this figure. However, um, sugarcane is not among the top GHG emitter agricultural crops of the world, and particularly when um, good practices are adopted both at its agricultural and at its industrial um, phases. Sugarcane derivatives, uh, such as the ones here, can actually contribute to, to a low carbon economy, for example, such as the use of first and second uh, generation ethanol as a biofuel. Also, uh, the use of sugarcane bagasse as a source of bioelectricity, and also as many other innovations that we have in this area that are renewable, sugarcane based, such as paper, bioplastics, and, and many others. So uh, with that in mind, Bon Supro uh, last year launched its uh, strategic plan called Sustainable Sugarcane Changing for Good um, that clearly sets a, a, very a very clear strategic aim here in this uh, wheel that says we want to improve the environmental impact of, of sugarcane and establish climate action as uh, one of our main strategic uh, objectives. Uh, in our plan, we have defined two main strategic uh, indicators here. The first one more related to reducing the average carbon intensity of the Bond Super Certified um, operators. And another one that is broader and is more related to Bond Super's role as a convener of, of the sector. So as part of the second um, indicator here, of the second objective that we have, uh, this project is part of it. Uh, and as a convenient platform of the sugarcane sector, we want to work with our members 
and partners to address um, the climate emergency by agreeing, in this case, uh, sector level commitments to science-based targets for sugarcane um, production that will meet the Paris Agreement, the 1.5 global warming uh, scenario on climate change by 2030. And this project today has uh, the intention to, to cover that. Of course, um, certification will remain uh, critically important um, to drive climate action through the application of the Bon Sucro standards. And as you can see here, our audit data from the Bon Sucro certified producers um, and mills, they indicate um, significant uh, year on year reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and also in, in water use. This is also supported by third party research. And we also know that uh, when global, if globally adopted, if that was uh, possible, the bond super certification had, uh, would have the potential to have uh, sugarcane industry, GHG emissions, according to um, a study led by the University of Minnesota a couple of years uh, ago. And the project uh, today that we're planting its work plan today is also, of course, very relevant for the Bon Sucro certified community, as it will show um, exactly the way how operators can set their THG mitigation targets, as this has been now required by the new Bon Sucro production standard, as stated in the indicator 3.2.1, that requires operators to ensure they have a climate change mitigation and resilience plan in place. As part of this mitigation plan specifically, the Bon Sucro standard requires now the operators to set their baseline emissions and their absolute GHG reduction targets. So that's um, that's how this project um, fits in. And this is a core indicator as well, as you can see here, which means that um, non-compliances won't be accepted. Um, as some of you might know, uh, Bonsucre left it a bit open for operators to define their own GHG reduction targets. This has been generating um, some questions, of course, for uh, from the implementation uh, point of view. So the project that we are presenting today will also address um, these questions as it will deliver a target setting guidance and a target setting tool that is customized for the sugarcane companies, either a, a mill, a farmer, or, or even a buyer of, of sugarcane uh, derivatives. So with all of these things um, on the table, we have been learning and also producing some content uh, related to climate action in sugarcane, such as our uh, climate uh, fact sheet. And also we have a special page in our website where we are concentrating relevant resources for, for the sector. In addition, we this year we also created what we're calling um, a climate action roadmap, which is a set of work streams and deliverables that Bon Sucro will be leading until 2026 being today's project also one of one of them. This roadmap here goes way beyond um, certification and aims at really giving a meaningful contribution to the climate agenda and the wider sugarcane sector. So the project is also part of this uh, roadmap. And the last point here in terms of uh, context is that, as I said, one of the things we want to do as part of this uh, roadmap and as a convening platform is a green sector level commitments to science-based targets for sugarcane production that will meet the Paris um, Agreement. To drive target commitments um, in the sector, we know that we must have a methodology behind the target setting, right? And that's why um, over the past months, over the course of this year, actually, we have started some conversations uh, with the organization SBTI, which is the science-based targets um, initiative. For the ones of you that don't know, this initiative is a partnership between the CDP, the United Nations Global Compact, the World Resources Institute, and the WWF. And this is the most credible uh, organization initiative in the world that provides guidance on how companies can define their greenhouse gas um, mitigation and science-based 
targets in line with Paris Agreement. So the SPTI has recently launched in September the flag criteria. Flag means forest, land, and agriculture. So that companies in food, um, agriculture, and the forest sectors can have a standard method to set their science-based targets that include their land-related emissions and also the, the removals. Although sugarcane companies can use the SPTI's uh, more general sector pathway that is available to define its, its reduction uh, targets, we saw that 11 more specific uh, commodity pathways were also created by the SPTI uh, within this flag um, criteria. And, that, and because sugarcane is not among the top um, GHG emitters of the world, it was not included as a separate uh, commodity pathway uh, within the SPTI methodology. And so far, as far as we know, there are no plans to develop one for, for sugarcane anytime soon by the, the SPTI. Therefore, uh, with, with this context uh, in mind that we have been developing over this year, Bon Sucro wants to step forward and take the lead um, to work with the relevant stakeholders of the sector and develop these special particular particularized science-based mitigation targets and pathway for, for sugarcane companies to establish meaningful targets aligned with science and also contemplating all the applicable particularities uh, of sugarcane as, as a commodity. Um, so the objectives um, that we want, that we have with this project are mainly two. One is really to develop this methodology that will uh, define how companies of the sugarcane value chain can establish their targets uh, and drive commitments to uh, the science-based targets for the greenhouse gas emissions of the sector with the, the, the particular aim of driving down the scope one, two, and three emissions. And secondly, in addition to define the methodology, we also want to support our members to meet these targets that they will um, define with access to data and knowledge and create this, this capacity, create this knowledge uh, internally as well, which we know can drive further opportunities, for example, on green financing and other types of partnerships that can help the sector to transition to a lower carbon um, future. In terms of methodology and the deliverables of the project, our technical partner for this mission is the consultancy Quantis that um, has a lot of experience in agriculture and in developing GHG pathways uh, according to the SBTI's um, frameworks. And something that is very important to say at this point is that although we have been having conversations with the SPTI. The sugarcane pathway that we will deliver here as part of this project has still no endorsement from the SPTI as an organization and is not part of their criteria of their pack of, of solutions. Um, we understand that Bon Sucro has the right expertise and access to the right people to build the pathway for sugarcane and we're going to work for this pathway to be further integrated into the SPTI's um, suite in, in the near um, future. Um, therefore, we're going to follow the same approach and structure um, that is offered by the SPTI's uh, other pathways uh, in this project, although so far we have no uh, endorsement or no recognition from the SPTI as an organization, this is a process that is uh, a conversation that is still um, ongoing. So these are the main methodological steps that we're going to be following within this uh, project, starting with what we're calling data and science review. In this part, we are going to uh, study all the standards that are available from the, the Science-Based Targets Initiative, how their flag criteria particularly fits into the broader uh, target setting approaches for, for sugarcane, what it includes 
and the methodologies uh, used to develop the flag uh, commodity pathways, including the main components of, of a pathway, non-land use change emissions, land use change emissions, and the removals um, trajectories. Secondly, we are going to have a data collection phase where we are going to collect and, and reveal existing data that is needed to model the sugarcane commodity pathway, such as, for example, regionalized data, data from different types of sugarcane operations all over the world to estimate and also to project sugarcane production through uh, 2050. The third uh, methodological step here is the actual creation of uh, baseline emissions. And here we're going to really create uh, what is the baseline for emissions in the sugarcane sector, both non-land use change emissions, the production emissions as a whole, but also land use change uh, emissions, and also the removals, the baseline removals associated with the production of sugarcane on a per kilogram basis, for example. And here is also important to note that just like the SBTI's um, flag pathways, the commodity pathways, our sugarcane pathway here will only cover emissions until the farm gate. Um, as the emissions and the, the, the production of sugarcane accounts for more than 65% of all emissions, and these are the most relevant emissions when we talk about sugarcane. We might want to improve the pathway uh, with, for example, the mill and the transportation phases, but this is going to be at um, a later stage. Uh, the fourth um, step here is really to model the GHG pathway, which means in practice to develop a target um, GHG mitigation potential for sugarcane that is aligned with, with the flag and derive the corresponding pathway and also to be integrated into the, the tool. We're also going to run pilots and one public consultation process so that everyone will have the opportunity to interact with uh, these deliverables and provide feedback. So basically our main um, deliverable here is the pathway and it is formed by two main uh, components as uh, deliverables. One is the target setting guidance and a target setting tool for the sector. As for the guidance, this is going to be um, a clear and a concise methodology document uh, on the current flag guidance learnings and also recommendations. Uh, these guidance might have around five, 10 pages. Uh, it's going to be short and it will include all the explanations on the three components of the overall pathway that we have and also describe the assumptions and the premises adopted in the model considering the reality of the sugarcane sector in different regions of, of the world. As for the tool, this is going to be an um, standalone spreadsheet to be integrated also into the Bound Super Calculator. And this tool will um, enable companies in the sugarcane value chain to set their mitigation targets. A mill, a farmer, a buyer of sugarcane derivatives will be able to use the same tool. We're going to structure these two with the same information that is available. Um, within the SBTI's flag tool because we want to follow, as I said, the same, the same approach. And we also want to make it as user-friendly as, as possible, of course, while respecting any, um, any SBTI's flag constraints and on potential future uh, integration. So this is basically the information that we're going to have in, within the target setting tool, which is basically the production region, which we're going to select based on where we have sugarcane being uh, produced, the base year and the target um, year, the production volume in the base and also in the target year, and the key component, which is the sugarcane emissions uh, bro broken down by its three main components, land, non-land use change, land use change, and removals components of the emissions. And it's important to mention here at this point that the total emissions um, volume will 
enable companies to reflect their best practices, their current practices that are in place. So if a company has implemented um, best practices that this, this adoption of best practices will be reflected here when the company reports uh, its emissions and it's going to be um, therefore reflected in the pathway and in the tool with a smaller target when, um, when the best practices are, are adopted. In other words, um, the operational best practices would be already captured here when uh, the greenhouse gas emissions of the related operation is being reported in the tool. So in terms of, of roles and responsibilities, this is going to be a multi-stakeholder development process with um, everyone, all actors of the sugarcane value chain, and we have uh, defined some responsibilities here. So, but the Bonsucre itself will be responsible to convene, to facilitate, and to oversee the whole process. I will be mostly your main um, focal point for, for the project. Quantis, as our technical um, partner, will actually develop the content and the guidance uh, and tool for, for the project. Quantis is being represented by our colleague Chelsea Blow and uh, her team of consultants. We are going also to uh, convene what we're calling an advisory technical committee or ATC. And the ATC is probably what is going to require more dedication from, from its representatives. As it, will re as it will be responsible for providing the guidance for the project on the goals and the, the direction um, on where the project is going. And this committee will also review and provide feedback on in an ongoing basis related to what's coming from, from the project. And uh, we're gonna make sure that this group is geographically diverse and comprise, of course, the relevant actors of the sugarcane value chain, as we need specific skills here uh, and knowledge to be brought to, to this group. Um, therefore, this is going, we anticipate that this is going to be a relatively small working group, and we are going to prioritize participation from uh, our Bon Sucre's Members Council and our Technical Advisory Board, and we're also going to invite um, some researchers in the area to be part of this, uh, of this committee. And finally, we also have a very, very important role here, which is the pilot testing group. This is going to be composed by companies from the sugarcane value chain, farmers, mills, intermediaries, and users, as many companies as possible uh, that we invite to, to take part here in the pilot testing group, uh, as their responsibility will be really to provide data to the project team in case the company is, a, is also a certified operator of Bon Sucro, we're going to have some uh, authorization, some approval from the company to be able to use their certification data for the pathway model where applicant, applicable. And this group will also, um, at some point next year, implement the, the guidance and the tool and provide feedback for, for improvement. We'll receive the pilots test it and provide uh, official feedback for the project um, team. So in terms of, of timeline, this is uh, the timeline for the project. It's going to be almost a one year um, project. We are going to start um, the actual execution of the project in January, 2023. Right now, we were focusing on launching the project, on planning the project, and we are still in the process of uh, convening the advisory technical committee. You're all going to be informed once we have all the approvals of the names of the people that are going to, to be part of this committee. And from January next year, we, we kick it off. And in summary, from January to late February, we're going to work more on setting the baseline emissions by collecting the data from, from the operators. From February to March, uh, basically we're going to model the, the pathway and in parallel, 
built out the, the tool, the target setting tool to incorporate, to be incorporated in the bounce sucro um, calculator. Just like here, Qantas will be developing that from Feb to, to March. And then from March to April, we're going to work on uh, incorporating real data into the tool to for the tool to be tested uh, ahead of the, the pilot and the public consultation. And um, then we're going to have the development of a second draft uh, towards uh, the second quarter of next year. So April and May, we're going to, based on this first round of data collection, testing, reveal, we're going to produce a second version. And then uh, in mid-2023, so June and July of 2023, we are going to run a two-month uh, process for pilot testing and public consultation. Basically, the difference is that the pilots will be an oriented exercise with the pilot testing group, which is that group of companies that will volunteer to test and implement the, the tool. And the public consultation will be opened for anyone that wants to have contact with this and provide feedback to, to the team. After this, we're going to consolidate. Bonsucro will consolidate what's going to come from, from the pilots and the public consultation. Together with the committee, we're going to decide what to incorporate and what not to incorporate. And Qantas will work on a final version uh, in October. And we plan to finalize and publish the guidance and the tool towards November of 2023. That's the, the plan for, for the project um, next year. And now we would like to, um, we would like your support. We would like to invite all of you to, to get involved with the project. This is a wider uh, call for action in the sector from farmers to millers and users, everyone that has an interest to see uh, the construction of this methodology of these two that is really going to help the sector to dimension uh, its contribution to, to the climate um, agenda. This is the hashtag of the project that we've been using. So hashtag sugarcane pathways, how we refer to, to the project. And we would like to um, explore now with you the, the way, some more details on how your company or yourself can get involved uh, with the project. So firstly, we are, and I'll kindly ask my colleague uh, Eden to post the, the related links in the chat so that you can have easy um, access. Firstly, we, are, we have created a specific mailing list with people that want to get projects uh, updates from now on. And if you're interested, you just have to subscribe um, on this list. Secondly, if your company wishes to volunteer to uh, take part in the pilot testing group as what we're calling a pilot uh, partner, you can just um, please do, do send an email to me with, with your logo on it and we're going to display your logo at the, the project's uh, webpage. If you only, if you do not have time or if you don't want to take part in the pilot testing group, we also invite you to communicate about the project, communicate your support to, to the project, and we're calling you a supporting partner. And basically, uh, Everyone can access the communication assets that were created for the project and use, uh, use them in your channels. In case you change the arts of these, um, of these materials, we kindly ask you to approve them with us uh, first. But here it's, it's really an open call for everyone to uh, support the project publicly and use these materials that are free, that are there available for everyone uh, so that you can promote the, the project. If you, if you wish to have your company associated with the project um, in a way, please do also uh, email me and we'll be happy to include your logo in our project's webpage as a supporting, as a supporting partner. And lastly, uh, we also invite all of you to take part in this process uh, during the public consultation uh, next year to share your feedback. In 2023, we're also going to organize sessions like, like this one that we're having today 
to present the progress of, of the project. This is going to be open for, for everyone to, to participate as well. There are some companies, some organizations that already demonstrated uh, public support for the project, and they will be now invited to define the exact way they want to be involved with the project, whether they will integrate the pilot, uh, the pilot testing group as pilot partners, or if they prefer to support only through communications as, as a supporting partner. But these are the companies that have already uh, stepped forward and manifested their, their very positive interest for, for the project, and we thank um, all of them. Um, all information about the project will be concentrated in the project uh, webpage that you probably already have the link uh, in the chat. Uh, this page will have this presentation in the next couple of days. We're going to upload the, the work plan presentation that you're seeing today in, on this page. We already have an executive summary of two pages of the project and all the communication assets are there as well in three different languages, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Feel free to download them and use them in your communications. And we also have a video that was recorded in three languages uh, in which I explain um, very briefly the idea of the project in less than, than four minutes. So feel free to use these resources as you see, as you see fit. Before we start Q&A, um, I'd like, Eden, if you could just post uh, already uh, the link to the feedback survey um, in the chat so that, we don't, so that we don't miss it. And I'll just have a look at the Q&A to see if we have any questions um, now. There is a very nice question from Bodoin Gusens. Thank you. Thank you, BG, for, for your question. So the question is, um, how, what will the pilot uh, look at? What we're exactly we're going to do at the pilots? So the pilot is pretty much going to be an oriented exercise of reading the target setting guidance and being familiarizing with the target setting tool and completing the target setting tool with the, the help of the guidance. This means in practice collecting the, the appropriate data on GAG, on the greenhouse gas emissions of a given uh, operation and completing the, the tool with this information so that you can generate your GHG mitigation target test if the tool is, is working, if you are okay with the assumptions and the premises that were included in the guidance. If you think that's relevant, if you think it's reflecting uh, your operation based on, on the technical choices that are going to be, to be made and providing specific feedback to Bonsucro and the team of the project on the, the user friendliness of of the tool, the the, opera, the, the operational aspects of, of the tool, whether it's it's nice, it's easy to, to manage and to, to use um, as a whole. That's what we want to, to collect during the pilot um, tests. Thank you. There is... Um, a question very interesting from uh, Darren Raffer. Thank you, um, Darren. Uh, if we could speak more to the pieces of the chain not included from the perspective of an intermediary. So um, with because the emissions in the, the agricultural phase uh, of sugarcane are the most relevant or the, the highest, we, we decided at this um, first uh, moment to include only the, for the pathway piece, only the agricultural uh, emissions and, and therefore the target setting for this phase of the, the production up to the farm gate, 
because it's more relevant. We want at a later stage to, to include the other um, phases of, of sugarcane production and processing, which is basically the mill phase and also the transportation and potentially the uses of, of sugarcane derivatives as part of the pathway. Uh, but we're going to, to do that at a later stage and focus now on what's more on what's more relevant. So in case you are a trader or intermediary or a buyer of sugarcane derivatives, with this tool, you'll be able to set your scope three GHG mitigation targets for the portion of the value chain applicable to the, the, the agricultural phase of, of sugarcane, which is the most relevant and where we have more opportunities to drive down the, the emissions. I hope I asked your question, Darren. Thank you so much. Um, there's a question from Julia Clark. Thanks, Julia. If we're going to send a recording of this, yes, we're going to share the recording of this session. We're going to upload it to the YouTube. You'll all be um, notified when once it's um, available. Thank you so much for, for your interest. Um, interesting question from Anil Kanchi. Thanks, Anil. If we have guidelines for baseline baselining the current um, GHG emissions, that's a great question. This is part of the, the work we'll be doing um, from January. So from Bon Sucro, we have a very um, dense uh, certification database from, from more than 10 years and from different regions of the world. So we want to use that as an asset for the project to help um, establish the baseline emissions. But we're also going to, to require other types of information and data that might be needed for the purpose of the pathway, particularly with the pilot testing group. So in case we don't have a relevant sample or a relevant uh, amount of data related to a specific aspect of the operation within the Bound Super Certification Database, we're going to have this group to provide us um, the, the relevant data that we need. And to define the baseline uh, emissions, Basically, uh, this relates to three main components, as I, as I mentioned. So land use change emissions is a component of the baseline, non-land use change emissions, and the removals uh, trajectories. For the removals specifically, I think that's probably where we're going to face more challenges because not many data, not much data is available on, on removals. And also, there is still not a consensus on the way to account uh, the best way to account for the removals um, of carbon in the in any agricultural uh, field. We've been following the GHG protocols, land use, and, and standard for accounting for, for removals. It's It has just finished uh, the public consultation. Uh, so we're still uh, using this for, for the, we're going to still use this for as a reference for, for the project, but we'll be following also other types of methodologies that are available to account for the removals component of the baseline um, emissions. I hope I answered your question as well. Thank you. Um, Bodoin also brought in a, a nice question. If we are going to compare the outcome of our tool with other tools, that's very interesting. Yes. So what we want to do is really to compare um, what we're going to get as a target from the sugarcane pathway, for example, compared to the sector uh, criteria of the BDSBTI that is already available for, for sugarcane companies to, to use and see how they differ uh, and, and use that, that as a learning uh, process as well. So that is the only one that is that we could compare, uh, maybe. But yeah, in case there are other tools that we, we might come across, they will be welcome also to, to be used uh, in the project so that we can compare and learn with, with each other. Thank you. And as cool farm too, yes, that's that's one that we also have in the pipeline to, to use. Thank you. There are a few other questions here. Let me just read them. Um, there is an interesting one from um, Ross Gilmer. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. 
he says uh, the climate action indicators and targets are identified in the strategic plan. As we saw, there are two. He asks whether there are KPIs for this project that align with these indicators and the target to monitor project uh, progress. That's a very good one. So if we go back to those um, indicators that we have in the strategic plan, the first one is more related to certification to the certified uh, world. We want to, to reduce the, the carbon intensity of our certified uh, operators. And the second indicators, we say that we want to drive commitments. It's a very broad one. And that's where this project uh, fits in. We say that we want to um, drive, um, we want to drive commitments and actions in line with the 1.5 uh, global warming scenario. And by delivering a target setting tool and a target setting guidance, we believe that this is uh, one of the answers for these indicators. This is a way to partial way to comply with these indicators of committing and acting towards uh, more climate um, ambition. So yes, this project connects with the second uh, strategic KPI that we have. And the way we're going to monitor uh, project progress, uh, we have a very clear uh, deadline, we have a, a very clear deliverables, but one thing we really want to, to do and to measure is how these tools are going to be relevant for, for the sector uh, and how multi-stakeholder the process is going to be. So we really want to make sure we have all the, re the relevant actors of the sector included in the development of this so that this is going to be generated in a, in a very uh, relevant way for, for the sector, including uh, researchers that are there uh, in the fields for, for a long time generating data and also bringing their expertise to these two so that we have the most relevant tool and guidance for the sugarcane sector to define its um, GHG mitigation targets. So that's how we're going to, to measure the, the progress. There's one question here uh, from Matthias Hoffman. Thanks, um, thanks Matthias. He says, um, on the beginning of the slides, we, we presented the reduction from point 33 to 27 tons of uh, CO2 per ton of sugar after five years of, of certification. This was the baseline for the, the strategic plan. Does that mean that 0.33 is the average for, for the industry? Uh, yes, this was the average number that was used here in the in the definition of these of this KPI. It's important to say that as new mills join certification, the baselines they change, but we are applying like a cutting rule also to to be able to work with these numbers in a in a meaningful uh, way. Uh, but the long story short, yes, the point thirty three was the average uh, used two years ago when the, the these strategic KPI was, was defined. And he says, if we could give some color on the range of emissions intensity for bone sucrose certified mills and the comparison to those not certified. Uh, we don't collect data from mills that are not certified. What I can say is on the mills that are certified. So the current um, average of emissions that we have and that was also recently published in our latest outcome report that was um, published um, two months ago during the Bon Sucre Global Week is 0.41 uh, tons of CO2 per ton of sugar. That's the, the average um, carbon intensity that we have nowadays considering all of the Bon Sucre certified operators. Thanks, Matthias. And I also have one another question here from Bodwin. Um, if we are also looking at uh, GHG emissions at transport and mill level, many mills use coal, for example, that's true. Uh, so as I said, at this um, 
In the first moment, we're only going to focus on the agricultural phase of sugarcane because it's more, it's more relevant when we talk about um, sugarcane production emissions. It's more than 65% of, of the whole, of the whole uh, piece of emissions. So we want to look at the GHG emissions from the transportation and also the mill uh, level, but this is going to be at a second uh, moment of, of the project after we finish this first uh, beat. And of course, um, when we, we get to that point, we're going also to consider the energy sources uh, used by the mill, regionalized uh, data per country, per region, based on these um, based on the sources that we have in a way that is reflected um, in the target setting tool, considering now other, other phases of, of the sugarcane value chain. And I think I don't have any more questions um, here. I think we have pretty much covered all of them. Um, so I think we can wrap up. Uh, so I'd like to thank you very much for, for attending this session, uh, for sharing your, your questions uh, with us as well. Um, and I invite you all to click on the link for the feedback survey of, of the session and you, so that you can share your thoughts with us on what you thought about these webinars so that we can always uh, improve. Thank you so much for attending. Have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening based on where you are and see you next time. Thank you so much.